Welcome back guys, it's your boy the Ace back on the track with another C2. In our last C2 we looked at Sliver which was quite slick to be fair and it's probably one of the best ones we've seen so far. Until now, maybe. So, today we're going to be looking at Covenant. So, developed by the talented Cobber, we have Covenant which isn't just your run of the mill C2. It has a great control platform designed to exploit web applications and their supported environments. This is aimed at simulating real world adversarial techniques. It helps security professionals build robust defenses and so much more. So Covenant's architecture is crafted in the flavor of C Sharp. It boasts scalability, allowing easy integration with support for multi-user profiles and databases like SQLite, MariaDB, PostSQL, etc, etc. What I do like about this, aside from the operational listeners that you get in most C2s, is the grunt aspect. These are like the foot soldiers of an ancient warfare warrior and the agent that communicate with the Covenant servers, conducting their missions in mostly a stealth-based approach. Now that's enough theory for now, let's hit over to the lab and let's see what this looks like. Now if we head over to the GitHub repo, we can see Covenant C2 available in all its glory. We have the 12 contributor list headed by Ryan Cobb. And as you can see, here's what the interface looks like. We have a quick starter guide and install setup. Now in terms of installation, the only issue I had with this, and I've experimented on a few Linux flavors with this, is installing this 3.1 SDK. That was the only issue I ran into. Other than that, it works a treat. Now, you can see here, you've got your basic commands, the git clone, cd into the directory, and then run this .net. Now, it has to be 3.1. If it's not, the C2 just simply won't run. Now here is one I prepared earlier, as it were. If we run .NET and then tac tac version, we can see I am running 3.1.426. Now in order to run the server, we just simply type .NET space run. Now we can run that. Right, now that's running. You can see here it starts the Microsoft Entity Framework model. It validates it and it gives you a covenant has started and navigate to your local IP with a specific port it gives. Now, if we browse to this location, now when we browse to this location, we're given the splash page for covenant. And on first install, you'd be asked to register already pre-registered already. So just, just go ahead and log in. And there we're in. So once we're in, we get a very nice GUI with a lot of information. So we could change the theme, can edit the roles here. And then we have a dashboard that listens for the grunts. We have a listener and we have any tasks that we may be running. So let's see what this looks like from a demo perspective. First of all, we have listeners. Now, you can have profile for listeners, and they have several here available, and you can keep creating more profiles. And they have a create feature. Now, you can create various types of listeners, which I really like here, and you also have a bridge listener as well. If we had a generic HTTP listener, we could specify binding ports, connection ports, and so on. And then you can also specify what kind of profile. Is it a custom HTTP profile or a default profile? And whether you want to use SSL or not, if you have a certificate handy. The connection address, you can either leave it as your loopback address. But considering it's my attacking box I'm using, I would like to use the box's address itself. So if, we, if config that. I like that. And then we could paste that address inside there. Lovely. And then we can create this profile. Now we have an active listener. And it's using port 80 here. 
there we have it started here now next we have what is called launchers now launchers give you the ability to launch deployments using different formats from install utilities all the way to w scripts and they have descriptions for each one here now a launcher is a grunt but in disguise and ideally once these are deployed on victim machines you would expect to receive some sort of callback now the launchers are bound to the listeners automatically so that's done dynamically on the framework which is really handy next we have grunts and these will report in as and when a launcher is successful we have templates as well different types of templates written in different languages we have tasks and then here's the various tasks or commands that a grunt can potentially do and it gives you a description for each one here which is quite nice you have task skins and these are specific tasks that are given to grunts based on what time and completion you want them to happen we have this graph which is quite nice from a ui perspective because it gives you an overview of not only where the listener is where the grunt is but their relationship as this expands Last, you have data, which is kind of the stuff you've harvested in your red teaming endeavors, and we've already seen users. So that's it from an overview perspective. Launches. So, as a basic level, we had a PowerShell launcher. Now, you can specify the listener. If you have more than one here, the dropdown will be much more bigger, of course. And then you can also specify parameters like a window hidden, for example. You can also specify the .NET version here, the implant template, etc, etc. So there is a lot of customization you can do here. Now, once we hit generate, we get the launcher specific for this listener and grunt that we're going to use. Now, as you can see here, generated this powershell code for us so if we head over to a victim's machine running a windows 11 box here now if we run powershell on the victim's machine here and we paste the code that we got do we believe that we're going to get a callback from this now bearing in mind covenant is an open source c2 and most likely the default deployments on any of the launchers is not going to work. But as a default, let's see what happens here when we fire it. So we get a PowerShell error here. The script says malicious content has been blocked by your antivirus. Like I just said, it is known by Windows at this point. Now, what we can do is try to use, for example, PowerShell steroids. Now, if you're not familiar with this, it is very much as it says on the tin. And it gives you a PowerShell that is overpowered in some way for some tools and red teaming endeavors. If you haven't installed it already, I highly recommend you do because you'd be missing out on some great tools. All right, so now we can go into PowerShell steroids. We go to tool obfuscate. We can obfuscate it by character and it's, it's going to obfuscate parameters, variables, functions, literal strings, command aliases, comments, everything. Don't need no saving. So here's the obfuscate code now. Now, if we run this, let's see what happens. Did we get a callback? there you have it shows <laughs> over so powershell steroids if you haven't used it already definitely recommend using that tool it can be very handy for lateral movement and obfuscation in your powershell scripting so as we can see here we have a grunt reporting back to us from the victim's machine now, if we go into here, we can see the details of the victim's machine. We can see 
we have an active grunt and we can also interact with that grunt if we really wanted to we have tasks that we can send and we have tasking that are sent now interaction all right so let's do the classic Jackie Chan who am I send that off that's been submitted and does he report back he should re be reporting back there we are so he's told us who he is again we have tasks here that we can see that we want we can kill things we can connect we can have shell we can upload we can download things create directories uh, really do whatever we want really even have a shell to execute shell commands kind of the usual that we always have We've got also a bypass UAC grunt very nice got a reverse shell grunt so these are tasks that you can send to your grunt uh, we've got a key logger as well got Kerberos port scanning and there's so many amazing do we have screenshot yes we do so let's go back to our grunt and ask him to take one here I love this it comes up dynamically as you start typing so it helps you find what you need screenshots been fired off I remember the graph section I told you as well so here we can see the listeners communicating with this grunt very nice here's the tasks that we gave here's the screenshot tasks not sure where the screenshots are saved but it looks like the task was completed As you can see, the screenshot is given right inside the terminal, and this is one of the VMs that I'm using. So we're looking at a machine within a machine, at another machine. <laughs> Bit of matrix there for you. Um, and yeah, really slick, really nice, can loads of versatility here. Um, and I think that's where I'm going to leave the lab demo. Now, as post-exploitation tools evolve they play a pivotal role in both the offensive and defensive realm of cyber security now ethical hackers use them to simulate real world attacks refining their techniques to bolster on security now covenant for me stands out in this space with its comprehensive features slick ui and the capacity for collaborative efforts now with its open source nature most of the launchers won't work out the box and that's where the skill is going to have to come in wrapping this up in terms of c2 covenant is truly signifies what it looks like for a modern c2 now we've seen predecessors in the past like powershell empire and it imposes the advancements that red teaming tools look like in a modern attack space for those of you yet to experience Covenant, it's higher time you dive in and don't miss out. If this review has enlightened you in any way, to get on board with the C2s out there, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Leave your thoughts, experience and comments below about Covenant. If, you ha if you're having any trouble with it, definitely either join HT or leave some comments below. Stay safe in the cyberspace. Peace out.